Hold on to your hats, guys. This may be a fantastic way to propagate figs. So the first thing I'm going to do is prepare the cups. So I've got these little Dixie cups and I like them because they're small and easy to deal with, they're disposable, but I actually reuse them over and over again. I'm going to show you how to turn these into little planters uh, quickly here. Uh, I, I really like, if you're going to use these, get the clear. This is kind of an opaque color so it's a little tougher to see but that's what they had at the time at the store. But try to get the clear Dixie cups because then you can see the roots coming through. So all I do with these is I get the cup and then I take some scissors here and just kind of grab it right on the edge at an angle and snip off the bottom. And if you can see there, it just creates a little hole. And then I turn it 180 degrees and do the same thing to the other side. And I'll do that to all of the cups and then we'll have little planters. All right guys, so this is what our little setup is gonna look like. As you can see, I've got this heat mat that I've had for quite a while now, and I've used it over the years for different things, but we're gonna use that today. And then I've got a tote right here, a clear plastic tote that I use for propagation. And then all the little Dixie cups that we cut holes in the bottom of. So for this experiment, I'm just gonna be using 12 Dixie cups, and I think that's probably about all the cuttings I'm gonna be able to get out of this. So what we're gonna do, and let me just explain real quick the purpose of this. So when you're propagating plants, the real important thing is, one, to keep the cutting from drying out, to keep it moist, uh, and two, it's important that the bottom of the cutting is warmer than the top of the cutting. And the reason is you want to stimulate root growth by keeping that end of the cutting, the bottom end, warm and increasing the likelihood that those little undifferentiated cells in there are going to multiply and divide faster and form roots before the top growth takes off, before the new buds open, before the plant actually starts requiring more moisture and nutrients, which in the beginning there's no roots to do that and so we really want to get that root growth going so the way to do that is to provide bottom heat so you know I, I if you saw my other video and I'll put a link up in the corner here um, if you saw my other video about propagating figs I tried some different methods and one of the methods I did was I placed the figs in a tote in the house and so the house is about 68 degrees it warmed up the entire medium, the fig cuttings, you know, the ambient air around the figs, all of it. It kept everything around 68 degrees, which is great. But what started happening, if you saw, was the top growth started coming out, but the roots hadn't formed yet. So we're at, I think we're April 28th or right around there. And it's been a really cool rainy spring here so it's still really cool outside it's been down into the 30s at night not freezing but the high 30s and then in the daytime it's been getting up into the 60s so i'm gonna i'm gonna have it outside and the goal is going to be we're going to fill each one of these cups here with our medium to plant in and then all around all of the cups we're going to have uh bark our fine fur bark so that it can act as an insulator to hold heat so the heat mat's going to come up through and warm all of that bark and in turn warm all of the medium in the cups and keep it warm while the cuttings are sticking up out of the top of the cups so that the buds on top are still really cool through the night and hopefully won't encourage new growth it'll just stimulate bottom growth now the <clears throat> The heat that we want this at, the ideal heat, is right around 70 degrees, give or take. We'll see what this heat mat does. There's some other options <clears throat> that I've thought of that we could possibly do, but for in the future, 
<clears throat> but for now, we're just going to use this heat mat because that's what I've got available. So the other thing I want to do is, um, like I said before, I've had the cuttings in the past inside the house in a window, and we don't get a ton of sun in through the window um, or a ton of light. And with cuttings, one of the things that you really want is a good amount of light but nothing no direct sun just as much a overhead skylight as you can get with as little sun as possible that'll actually stimulate the top growth but we're hoping to get root growth faster with this method than we get the top growth but once we get that root growth i'm hoping the top growth will just take off and do great with the overhead uh, light that we've got now i'm in my hoop house and this is 50 percent shade cloth uh, so the direct sun does hit this, but it shades out 50% of the sun, and it's actually pretty mild in here. Um, another option would be to put this on the north side of a building where the sun doesn't hit directly, but you get lots of overhead light. So let's go ahead and get this filled up and show you what it's going to look like. All right, guys, so as you can see, I've got the tote filled up here and we've got bark all in the cups and then around the cups so it's creating a solid layer uh, that can heat up there's lots of air space between the bark pieces here and this is just that fine fur bark i talk about but lots of air spaces in there to hold plenty of heat uh, and then individual cups in there and you may be asking well mike why don't you just fill the whole thing up with bark and that's what i do in my large propagation frames but for this purpose I think it's really neat and there's something to be said for being able to see how well this is working and we don't have to worry about roots intertwining. In my big beds I propagate rhododendrons and rhododendrons have fine hair like root structures that say the, the root balls stay pretty compact when they're young. Um, fig roots though I'm learning really grow long and they seek out water and so they grow everywhere and they can get intertwined really quickly so it'll make it a lot easier when it comes time to pull these guys out to just have them in individual cups here the other thing I want to add to this one of the big concerns with rooting cuttings is rot and fungus and all kinds of things when you when you have uh, cuttings in an environment that is moist and humid and warm um, damp all that it encourages fungus and mold growths and all kinds of undesirable things to happen with your cuttings and so with this setup right here the thing that I, I really like about it is there is no covering now this is not going to work with every cutting but there's no there's no humidity dome there's nothing to maintain a real humid environment there's lots of airflow through here even though we're going to be warming up this soil really well uh, the moisture the humidity can all kind of evaporate out and there's plenty of room for air to get down in there so it really helps to discourage fungus and mold and you know any kind of bacterial diseases or anything that could eat away at the cuttings when it comes to um hardwood cuttings like this uh and there's no actual leaves coming out that are losing moisture you can have them wide open without any kind of a humidity dome over them so i think it's really going to encourage cutting down on those fungus and molds and like I said we're hoping that these things don't actually leaf out until we've got good root growth so we won't have to worry about humidity all right so let's go ahead and get these cuttings stuck I know you guys are excited to move forward on this so I hate to do it <laughs> that'd be my first fig but I'm gonna go ahead and take a cutting of this guy I'm gonna come right about there all right guys so we took our stem off of that laterula fig now I'm going to go ahead and snip back the top here and just go down the length and find where I think would be some good cuttings. So one of the things we want to make sure of, and this is really with any plant, um, see if I can get this a little closer. Uh, come on, focus, buddy. <laughs> so you see the, the leaf node right there. You want one node above the soil and at least one below it. The, the undifferentiated cells that are in there that will eventually turn into either leaf bud or leaves or stems or roots, they're all mostly centrally located around 
bud union. So you want to make sure that you're sticking at least one bud under the soil and have one bud to form leaves above the soil. We'll go ahead and cut maybe an eighth of an inch right below that bud. And then here's a bunch of excess material we don't really need. We'll cut that off. Um, we'll go right below. Actually, we're just going to get two cuttings off this guy. So I've got two cuttings with two buds or three buds on each of them. And then what I like to do is just shave a little bit of bark off. So we can get down to this cambium layer here where all of the all of the root growth will actually happen. And that's that real light green layer, not the white pulp inside, but the light green layer just on the inside of the bark. Now these are a little bit fatter cuttings than I would normally want to take, but I'm going to go ahead and take them because that's what we've got. We'll dip these guys into some rooting hormone. And then stick them in our tote. I'm going to kind of firm that down. We'll get the other one in there. And I may come back after this just to retain more heat and because I'm packing these down a little bit and put a little bit more bark over the top of all this just to kind of fill it in and make sure I'm retaining as much heat as possible. And this guy is heating up really nicely. I really like how that's going. So I think we're going to be able to get this little bed up around the 70 degree area. We'll label these guys Laterula and move on to the next ones. All right, guys, so we've got all the cuttings, cuttings taken here. So I ended up with a lot of Black Mission. <laughs> so, you know, I got what I got. Uh, I bought these figs at a nursery that were, you know, small. And so some of them were smaller than others. I ended up getting, the, the Black Mission was the tallest. And I ended up getting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I think, cuttings there. And then we got two of the Laterula back in there and one Violet de Bordeaux, and then one Peter's Honey in the back. Now the only one I didn't get here was the brown turkey, and that's because that, that plant was only about, it was less than a foot tall, so there wasn't really anything to take a cutting off of yet. Uh, I mean, I guess I could have, but I didn't want to mess with it. So we've got them all in here now. We'll see what happens. I'm really excited about this setup in particular and seeing how it's going to, uh, perform. I've already felt, and this mat I've had going for about 20 minutes or so now, it's already starting to get really toasty, and I'll come back out in a little while later here today and see how this medium feels, but if I can get this thing even up to 75, 80 degrees maybe, um, I think I'd be pretty happy with that. I'll come back and I'll just put a little bit of water over all this to keep it damp. I'm not going to get too worried about water and moisture and all that because we don't have top growth on these cuttings. Uh, about the only thing that I'm going to um, do is come out and check this every once in a while because we do have bottom heat. So the moisture will dry out, or the, the bark will dry out a little faster uh, because of the bottom heat and there's no cover. So I will come out and check this and make sure that the soil is just moist. I don't want it wet. I just want it to be moist. And I'll go over it occasionally with a little bit of water. Uh, and we'll go from there. So the cuttings here weren't ideal. Uh, you know, they were off of new plants and the material wasn't uniform. Some of it was two-year-old wood, which I'm not too excited about. But, you know, we're I'm new to this here. This is my first year messing around with figs. And I think, I, I really just, with this experiment here, I really want to see how this little setup works and how well it does or doesn't do, we'll find out. So I think we're gonna learn a lot with this propagation setup. I'll keep you guys updated. I'll come back probably, shoot, in a month maybe. And actually, I'll probably be out here in a couple weeks checking for roots, but I'll, I'll do another shot as soon as I start seeing some roots and let you guys know how things are going. Uh, like I said, I think we're at about April 28th today, so we'll see uh, what we get here in about a month. 
All right, we'll check back in. All right, I want to come out here and show you guys real quick what's been going on. So I've been at work the last few days. It's only been three days since we took these fig cuttings. And I wanted to show you, I know I'm going to get this question. So here you go. I put a thermometer down in there and the temperature has been around 80 degrees. So it's a little hotter than I wanted it. It's actually been up to 90 when the sun was out uh, in here. But I'm not too concerned about it. I've done a lot of research on it. And really when it comes to plant propagation, the issue with the temperature getting hotter is not that the cutting won't root. It's not that those cells won't multiply and divide. They'll, they'll get going even faster because they've got more warmth. The problem is the rot, but I'm convinced we've gotten rid of that problem because we don't have a humidity dome over top of this. We're not maintaining a ton of humidity and a bunch of air flow or a bunch of uh, um, moisture in this environment that will contribute to rot and mold. There's tons of airflow. We're just open in the greenhouse right here and there's no humidity built up around the cuttings. The other thing that is going to work out great with this is the new growth on these plants is not going to take off hopefully before the roots do now i want to show you this i just pulled up this laterula here i don't want to do this to all of them because i want to give them a chance but we're only three days into this now and as you can see hopefully you can see here there's already some callus kind of starting to bubble up around the edges there and let me see if i can show you this better with my finger right in there along the edges of just on the inside of the bark you can see that callus bubbling up and starting to form it's 80 degrees down in that soil and the cells in there the undifferentiated cells are just multiplying and dividing like crazy like i said three days into this now i'm not going to do this constantly because i don't want to really upset what's going on there but i don't know man i think within a couple weeks here we're going to have some nice roots and what's even better than that is we'll have those nice roots without all the green growth. I really believe, I mean, it's fun to see the green growth and we'll get that, but I really believe that we don't want to see that green growth too soon. We don't want to see that green growth before the roots come out. So anyway, quick update. You can see the temp there is around 80 degrees. I'm real happy with that. Uh, even if it gets up 85, 90, I'm happy with that. I don't worry about it all. Um, in regard to watering, I've been watering uh, you know, once every two days or so just to keep the moisture levels up because it is evaporating quickly with the bottom heat and no cover. So, all right, guys, I'll keep you updated. All right, guys, you have got to check this out. Our system is working. And, you know, I typically don't like to brag about myself. Well, that's not true. <laughs> I do like to brag about myself, but what I always say to people is you got to brag about yourself. Nobody else is going to do it for you, but you know, I love plant propagation. You know that I'm constantly experimenting. And as you've seen earlier in this video, we've got a new experiment going on and I am so flipping excited about this. This has got to be the best way to propagate figs. Uh, you know, I, I almost think this has got to be the best way to propagate any hardwood cutting any hardwood cutting I, I could only imagine it would work for just about anything we are 12 days now into taking these fig cuttings here we've got our bottom heat going we've got our little temperature gauge you can see it's 85 degrees i showed you in that last clip that it was i think i told you it was up around 90 I've had it to a point now where during the nighttime it's hovering around 75 to 80 and during the daytime it's going up 80 to 90 depending on the day. We've had a lot of weird weather here. It's been sunny, it's been cool, it's been hot. It's you know, it's kind of all over the place right now, which is typical for western Washington. But um the the temperature's been between 70 and 90, hovering mostly around 80. And we've got this system set up to where we've got, you know, cool air usually around the cuttings here. Not cool. I mean, it is cool. I mean, right now today, you can see it's, you know, it's pretty, the shade cloth is bright and it's, I'll just tell you, it's hard, you can't feel it. It's almost like uh, the Food Channel when they say they wish you could taste it, but uh, 
or smell a vision but you can't really feel it but it's it's a little warmer in here right now today but usually it's cooler it's been cloudy so it's cool in this hoop house and so the tops of the cuttings are probably it's in the 60s around these cuttings here but the bottom has been up in the 80s so that's what we wanted man we wanted the bottom heat to be really warm the the rooting medium to be super warm and the tops to be cool because we don't want to encourage those little buds i know it seems counterproductive but we don't want to encourage those little buds to open up yet and there's all these videos about fig cuttings and i did it too myself but you know people put them in these plastic totes and figs are taken as hardwood cuttings and so when you put them in a tote you encourage all the top growth you encourage all those little buds look at that see you got one little bud starting open but that's kind of a green cutting it was almost new growth right there that might have been there that way uh but you when when you put them in a tote it, it, or in your house in a tote and you keep the environment humid it forces those the, the new growth to just boom just start opening up but the roots have not opened up yet and so that can be a real problem because it encourages mold and fungus and i did it myself and i had some mold and fungus and this is what see here's the here's the olympian figs that i took they've got some mold and fungus growing them i don't think they're going to make it but the desert king i took that I had inside in the tote. They're taken off now, but they had some problems in the beginning. And the tops you saw in that last fig video grew before the roots did. Now I've got good roots on them. And these, I think nine, you can see that little guy, he's kind of, he started wilting back, but he's starting, he's got some new little buds coming out there. Um, I think he's gonna be okay. And then we've got this guy started dying back when I took him out of the tote, but he's got a nice little bud on there on the backside that's going okay. But the rest of them are doing good. I think we're gonna have nine of them, maybe 10. We'll see. But, I, you know, I didn't necessarily want that new growth coming out. I wanted the roots. So anyway, we set this system up. We're 12 days into it. And I pulled this little black mission fig cutting. Let's see, hopefully I didn't break the root earlier. That would be a terrible devastating there it is i'm not gonna mess with it too much look at that look at that guys 12 days into it and we've already got a root coming out we've already got a root coming out isn't that crazy 12 days and so you can totally see that well i broke that root off <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not too worried. I've got, I think most of these are, uh, most of these are mission figs, but, uh, and so I can lose one, but I mean, you guys can see that this is working. Our new system is totally, totally working, man. It's crazy. Let's take a look. I haven't pulled this one up yet. Let's take a look at this Peter's honey. I don't care if I break roots. We're going to break some roots if we have to, to see how all this is going man let's hopefully don't break a root look at that look at that it's working i get so excited when i see this stuff man look at that i hope this camera's focusing oh johnny i hope <laughs> i hope this camera's focusing on this but that is just amazing 12 days and the most amazing part about it is now that these, I mean, you don't even see, I mean, there's some callus, but you see roots just shooting out before the callus is even forming, really. I mean, these things just want to root. They're primed to root. But the most amazing part about this, and I want to, I think that's the only Peter's honey I've got. I got to be careful when I pop this back up. It's the only Peter's honey. Um, I don't think I want to mess with any more of these with any more of these because they're starting to root, man. They are starting to root, and I don't want to break them up. But uh, the most amazing part about this, follow me now, is that not just that it's got roots coming out. We're not building a ton of callus. We're building just straight roots with this system. All right, guys, I just came out here and I wanted to show you this. It's actually two days later. And so we're at 14 days now. And I wanted to look at these guys again. I couldn't help myself. So I pulled up, first of all, I pulled up this black mission. Now this black mission was a newer cutting. And you can see this is, uh, 
this is kind of greener growth. Let me get this in. Kind of greener growth up here. And that's why that bud is starting to sprout. It was it was actually this is this year's growth and I I pruned it back right here. But um that's why that's starting so new. It's already wanting to start growing. But you can see all the older growth. None of the buds are opening up yet, which is what I wanted. But if you look right here, we've got our Violet Day Bordeaux. This was so exciting. 14 days in this setup. See if I can get this. I hope this you're able to see this. Uh, where are we? There it is. Oh man, I hope this camera can see it. Right, right where my finger is. Jeez. Let's see if I can set this down real quick. So, 14 days after I did this, right above my finger, I wish this these cups weren't opaque, but right above my finger, I don't know if you can get that with this camera, there's a little root. And there's a couple of those along this Violet Day Bordeaux. Let's see if I can find some more. Uh, there's another one right there. You guys see it? Right above my thumb. There's roots. They're growing into the side of the container here. They're encircling the container. And look at the top growth. Look at the top growth of these cuttings. Nothing. I mean, you could see that tiny bud starting to, you, you could tell it's got a little color to it, a little red color on the tip. And it's wanting to start growing, but it hasn't started yet. These things are, I mean, that's got roots shot out to the side of the cup, starting to encircle the cup already on that Violet Day Bordeaux. 14 days. I'm telling you guys, I might, I might change how I propagate everything around here. I don't know, we'll see how this goes. I'm just super excited about how this is working out. 14 days I've got roots encircling the cup. For two weeks, hardwood cuttings. Now I know figs root faster than a lot of plants, but two weeks I've got roots encircling the cup and what's more, I've got no top growth, which is perfect. I've got a solid root base starting to build that can support a plant. And we have no humidity, we have no humidity dome. We've got none of that start, you know, needed. None of that is even necessary in this setup. And so I can immediately take these cups right out of this little setup and I can just put them off, set them up with the rest of my stuff in the hoop house. There's no hardening off of them uh, because the, the leaves haven't even come out yet. And by the time the buds swell and start growing, like these guys over here, these will already have tons of roots to support the top growth and you won't have to harden them off. You won't have to, you don't have to worry about the disease or any of it. Fungus problems, none of it, man. So cool. 14 days. All right, let's check back in on these guys in a little while. All right, guys, it's day 17. Got a little zucchini there we got to get planted out. But let's take a look at these figs. That is what the big deal is right now. So once again, real quick, we're just uh, just under 80 degrees, probably about, what is that, 77 degrees, somewhere in there. Let's see what we got back over here. Oh, wow. He's, uh, he feels rooted in good. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna pull it out. What the heck? That's what we're here for. Wow, look at that, man. Look at that. Day 17. Day 17. I'm just so amazed at that, guys. That I, I think we can just... Man, I'm going to have to wrap this video up quick and just get it up for you. This is, this is total success right here. So, and remember, the most important thing about all of it is not so much the massive amount of roots, which that's really awesome after day 17, uh, but the fact that they're not in a humid environment these figs and so we don't you know and they're not the the tops are in a cooler environment um the outside i mean we're right now i mean it's we've had like i said we've had a really cool spring and it's been rainy cool you know and so the temperature right now outside i think it's like 40s or 50s it's cool and we're in mid-may which is a little unusual but but because of that the top growth is cool and there's no new growth so you could package that sucker up 
and just ship it off if you were trying to sell fig cuttings that were already rooted uh, or just you know I'll take this I'm gonna repot that up as carefully as I can I don't care if I tear a few out. I've got so many black missions here but uh, I'll I'll pot that up and then I might I may just leave it in here so it gets more <laughs> solid big roots but you could the cool part about this is you can pull this whole thing right out you could set it off with the other figs here and just let it grow on in the propagate or in the hoop house here and then I could slide a whole nother cup down in there with a whole new cutting isn't that cool man let's see if we can let's just tear some fig cuttings up what do we care all right here's a black mission and it's wow that's pulling the whole cup out so I don't know maybe we don't want to pull that guy all the way out oh, what the heck we're having fun right there's some more probably pulling some roots off there but look at that man just check that out isn't that cool and now these figs I won't tear any more up I don't want to tear these guys all up but these figs now look at all those roots these guys are totally ready they have got a root system and they are totally ready to support top growth you can fertilize them they're totally ready to support top growth and you don't have to worry about keeping the leaves humid you can take these cups and put them right over here with the rest of your figs out in 40 50 degree temperatures because there's no leaves that can that you just, you don't have to worry about the leaves they're they're still they're still woody material here without the leaves coming out yet so those leaves will just naturally come out like these little guys they'll start opening up just like these little guys that I never had in any kind of a humidity dome and they'll come out on their own and acclimate as they go you don't have to worry about keeping them misted keeping them humid none of that stuff I don't know what do you guys think I just think this is totally awesome all right guys so we're at day 21 with these figs and I think it's about time to wrap things up man what a success this little propagation system turned out to be and i am just really excited about how it worked out let's take a look all right so you guys have been watching these little figs produce their roots and we're at day 21 now we've got what are the temps this morning starting to warm up here a little bit more this week so we're almost to 85 degrees and man it's toasty down there in that soil when i lift these cups up i can feel the warmth just float up from those little holes down there but look at this I was looking at this laterula it's a big cutting there big fat cutting look at the size of that you guys see that root coming down the side of that cup all the way out to the edge and this this I'm telling you guys this is how I am gonna propagate figs from now and I am not messing around with any other method and once again I've said it before the reason is I've got these beautiful cuttings that are rooting well that are going to be able to support top growth and no buds opening up no leaves which is just outstanding because i can take this cup like i said and i can just put it right over here with the rest of my little plants and boom i'm done it's good it's golden and it can go off and i don't have to acclimate it or anything i don't have to you know do anything special keep a humid environment for leaves there's no leaves there's nothing to rot and this sucker's got tons of roots all the way through the cup all the way to the edge it's crazy i mean i'm just really excited about this so uh i think we can call this a complete success in fact let's there all of these containers have roots you can see there's a little root to the edge there <clears throat> this is a black mission like i showed you i've got so many black mission in here i'm gonna sacrifice one maybe it'll still make it but <clears throat> let's uh <clears throat> let's pull this out and take a look at it together and see what those roots look like now you can see as i showed you before there's a little bit of new growth wanting to start coming through but he's got tons of roots to support it so i'm not worried about that at all and really the only reason that one's even because you can see the rest of them 
they just some of them have little tiny green poking through but they don't have any leaves yet this one's got the biggest bud of all of them but this was this year's growth and i think it's just prime and ready to start growing and so it wants to it's the middle of may but uh still no leaves there nothing to wilt back nothing to acclimate to the a less humid environment no worries at all and just tons of roots so let's go ahead and get uh get this set up so we can figure out how to see these roots all right so let's take our little fig here and we are going to pull this right out of the cup i'm gonna put this down and let's see what we get all right so you can see you know what let's just tear it apart let's just do it i don't even care Ugh. i'm gonna dump a lot of this stuff down let's just pull them out let's just pull them out look at that man those roots around the edge of the cup are broke off completely <laughs> Jeez, where'd that guy go Ugh. all right look at that look at all those roots and it's got more just just shooting out look at that this guy is just primed and ready to take off and it's just a stick there's no top growth there's no leaves at all to acclimate to any kind of uh to any kind of uh, less humid environment it's just there it is and you could leave it in that cup and it would grow just fine on its own all right i can't help myself so i only have two of the laterula but let's just take a look at what we've got in there you can see there's roots going all the way down the side of that guy so let's see what we've got. We'll throw him out. And I'm going to try and gently uncover this one so we can hang on to most of the roots here. Let's get this down on the ground here. All right. Let's see. Alright, I'm going to rinse him off with a little water. Get all that bark out of there. Look at that guys. So there's our laterula. And you can see, see if I can get this going good. You can see all the massive amount of roots taken off right there and this guy is going to be able to support all the top growth but there's none yet you saw that last vi video i did of the figs um if you saw that last video i did where i was uh propagating them in that little green tote and i pulled them out and there was no roots we had tons of top growth uh, I mean, you guys all have similar experiences, I'm sure, with that, but it, it just it doesn't make sense to me because you've got all this top growth and it can wilt back and die and you have all these problems with fungus and everything because you have to keep them humid, you have to keep the moisture around them until they actually form roots and can support themselves. It's like babying this little thing that you don't need to do it that way. I mean, look at that. This is just... I'm just so, so happy with this. Anyway, I know I've said that 500 times, but I hope you guys uh, like this video and like this little setup. Let's show you one more shot of them roots, and then I'm going to try and pot him back up and, and get him going. Look at all that little callus and all them roots. Isn't that fun to see? That is just so cool. That is just so cool, man. Just massive amounts of roots coming out of that guy. And he will go on to support an awesome plant. Anyway, that's what I wanted to see. Roots without the top growth. We did it, we made it, and we had fun doing it. So, hope you guys were able to use that. If you like this video, please like it. Subscribe if you want to follow along, see other propagation videos. And if you want to continue this conversation, 
about this system or this setup, just comment down below. And uh, have an awesome week, and I'll see you guys in the next video.